Amen. If you've got a Bible, if you'd like to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Do you know what? It's Resurrection Sunday, guys. Amen. Do you know what? This vision that I've just, just, just cast, it's only possible if Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. We can only have a hope of a transformed world if Jesus actually rose from the dead. Amen. That is amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. It is amazing. Come on, let's get excited. Do you know what? Life around us looks dark. It looks hopeless. Do you know what I mean? There's this war in Russia and whenever you turn on the news, there's always something bad coming into your brain and into your mind through your ears and your eyes but I've come to give you the good news today that Jesus Christ there's still an empty tomb amen that Jesus died but he didn't stay dead he rose from the grave hallelujah and not only does that bring life to us one day it's going to bring life to the whole world the Bible declares that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth that all nations are going to flow into the kingdom of God that all kings and all queens and politicians are going to bow their knee to Jesus Christ and honor him as Lord and as King I don't know about you but that excites me you know that gives me that gets me up in the morning do you know what I mean thinking yes I'm on the winning team Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords do you know what that, that helps me get up in the morning sometimes I have to remember it sometimes I have to take a moment to think to myself and think you know what we're the people of the future Christians are the people of the future we're the ones who innovated the the book you know the book the the, the, the paper book with binding on that's a Christian innovation there was no books until Christians invented the printing press you know the Bible that's the very first book ever to be created in history it's the, it's the first library as well. The Bible is a library. It's a collection of books written over uh, the, a, a few thousand years. Uh, none of it contradicts. All, every single author, um, you know, ba basically, it's all in sync. It's all written by God through human authors. This is the first library. You can thank God for education today. You can thank God for books. You can thank God for libraries. Amen. We're the people of the future. Do you know what I mean? Everything that we see in our nation, whether it's healthcare, uh, the criminal justice system, innocent till proven guilty, all of that, I want to tell you today, comes from this incredible book, the Bible, written by God. Hallelujah. So we're gathering today for Resurrection Sunday to celebrate the focal point of our faith. Transformation for us and transformation for the whole of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Yet this, this historical event is not only essential for us here this morning who believe, but it's important for the whole of humanity. And why is it important for the whole of humanity? Well, you see, the resurrection of Christ answers all of man's problems, man's core and foundational problems. The, the, you know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the answer to man's sin. It's the answer to man's guilt. And ultimately, it's the answer to the problem of death that each and every one of us faces. You know what? Death is something that makes us all equal. All of us one day are going to die. We're going to cease to live on this earth. Because the Bible tells us that all flesh is like grass and all of its glory like the flowers of grass. The grass withers and the flower fails. But the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. Okay, let's start. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church 2,000 years ago. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of all the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. 
On the contrary, I worked harder than all of them, yet it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless his word to us this morning. Words of truth, words of life, words of historical uh, evidence and validity. You know what? What a remarkable piece of scripture that is this morning. I mean, what a remarkable truth it is for us to own this morning. For us to own it as though it's our own, as, as in we're in possession of this very truth. You see, we own this hope this morning. Amen. Because hope has a name and his name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus Christ. And if you own Christ as your own this morning, the hope of eternal life is your guaranteed destiny this morning. Nothing can take that. Nothing can stop it. You are going to live forever. Hallelujah. That is a great message. It sounds foolish. The Bible even says it sounds foolish. But do you know what it also says? That it's the wisdom and power of God to those who are being saved. Amen. And that is exactly what the Apostle Paul reasons out here in this passage that we've just read. He documents it here. You see, he begins by reminding uh, he, sorry, he begins his discourse by reminding the Corinthian church of those things which are of first importance. I want you to receive this, Darren, as you're getting baptized this morning. And all of us, the things that are of first importance, this of course being the gospel of Jesus Christ, in which we have received and which we are to continue standing in, we're to continue trusting it, we're to continue living in it and having our being in it as a way of life. What is the gospel? Well, it's that Christ died for our sins, amen, in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. In other words, Jesus died and rose from the dead. Exactly how the Old Testament scriptures had predicted thousands of years beforehand. You know this book, it's divided, you've got an Old Testament, you've got a New Testament, and the Old Testament prophets prophesied the coming of Messiah hundreds and hundreds of years in advance. And you know it all happened when Jesus came and lived and walked upon the earth, when he died and rose again, it happened exactly how the prophets had prophesied. I mean, that is incredible, isn't it? How can you predict the future? Well, I want to tell you, you can predict the future if God's speaking through you, Amen. Wow, what an incredible thing. But I mean, if that wasn't enough for you this morning, after Christ was raised, the scripture tells us that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12 apostles, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. Wow. Then he appeared to James, then to all the rest of the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to the apostle Paul. I mean, get on that a minute. After Christ rose from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ physically appeared to about 600 people. I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? Uh, I mean, that's Peter, the apostle. That's the original 12 apostles. That's 500 people at once. And then James, the rest of the apostles, and the apostle Paul. And roughly about 600. About you do the maths, I'm not a mathematician. But, uh, you know, like, that is amazing, isn't it? The way that Christ appeared to the Apostle Paul was pretty incredible, wasn't it? 
Here we've got this religious leader, this Pharisee. He's riding on his horse to Damascus to go and persecute and murder a load of Christians, right? And right in that moment, the risen Lord Jesus Christ appears to him, knocks him off of his horse, yeah? Blinds him. And this man becomes one of the most powerful Christians ever to have lived. He's the one who we're reading this morning. He writ most of the New Testament. That tells you something about the gospel, amen? It's not about how good you are. It's not about how righteous you are. It's not about how perfect you are. It's not trying your best to be a better person. No, it's about saying, look, I'm a sinner. I'm a wretch, right? I've lived my way and it's just brought train wreck. And God, I need you to give me new life. That's what, re that's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. That is the gospel right there. And you know, the apostle Paul was transformed the way I was, the way Darren was. Everyone can see the change in Darren. It's incredible. No one can deny that something's happened to that man right there. And it's just as like what happened to the Apostle Paul. Yeah, he changed. He went from killing Christians to being the greatest teacher and servant of God that there has ever been. I think that is absolutely amazing. Now you could come and go, well, you know, maybe he just had mental health problems. Maybe he lost his mind. Maybe he fell off the horse, banged his head and lost his mind. Right? Yeah, maybe he was tripping, man, or something. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if they did drugs back in those days. They probably did. They were witchcraft and sorcery around. But, you know, I mean, like, you could say that. Okay, then, say that. Let's, let's, just, let's just think about that a minute. Yeah, okay, then he might have lost his mind, okay? Although, when you're reading his writings, this is a very intelligent man. I can't really see that as much of an argument. But he may have lost his mind, yeah? The same cannot be said for the 500 eyewitness accounts who all saw him at once. Just think about that a minute. That's like 500 people being gathered in one space and the risen Christ showing up there and then and people seeing him. I mean, did you know that opponents of the gospel, atheists and different, you know, religions and that, they want to say that, oh, you know, they were, just, they were just hallucinating. That is literally what they're saying. It was one big hallucination. Do you know what? The only problem I see with that is, how can 500 people all have the same hallucination? It's just not happening, guys. Come on, stop being biased. Just acknowledge it. Jesus was seen after he died, he'd risen. And do you know what? There's proof as well, lots of evidence about the crucifixion that he did actually die. I, I encourage you, if you want to know more about that, go look it up. There is so much evidence that Jesus really died and that he really rose from the dead. And do you know what? The evidence isn't just in the Bible, even though the Bible is the greatest authority for the believer in Christ, because it's the word of God, but the, 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 the evidence is also outside of the Bible. Josephus, a Jewish historian, didn't even believe Jesus was the Messiah. He wrote extensively about the, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, he didn't believe it. It's just insane, really. But, he, you know, th there we go. There's one evidence. Tacitus, who was a Roman historian from, like, the first couple of centuries of the Roman Empire, he also wrote about Jesus Christ. This isn't a fable. It's not a myth. But it's a real historical man who really died. I mean, wow. Th that really is important for us to know that. Because if Jesus did rise from the dead, if he did die and he did rise from the dead, then it's really, re really important that we think about that. You know, what does that mean for us? Who is Jesus Christ to us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive today. Amen. He's alive. I hope that kind of encourages you this morning. We need to preach this to ourselves sometimes. But it's because of this great act of God in history that we are full of joy today that we can be victorious, that we can say we are more than conquerors, even though we suffer, even though we go through stuff, even though COVID was a reality and still is a bit, even though there's a war in Russia, even though our future is uncertain, we know that our destiny is sure and certain in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're more than happier than ever today. And it's because of the empty tomb right there on that picture that you saw earlier on. The stone was rolled away. He was found. He wasn't found in the tomb. You know, it's because of the empty tomb today that there's an empty prison cell today. It's because of the empty tomb today that there's an empty bedsit where I once lay. It's because of the empty tomb today that Stephen Smith is no longer off of his face. It's because of the empty tomb today that I am changed. Hallelujah. 
The same goes for each and every one of you. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about Darren, even though he's absolutely on fire for God at the minute. And there is something special about us. We're uniquely made. We're valuable in the eyes of God. But what I'm trying to say is, it's like I'm not a super Christian. All of us have been transformed and changed by Jesus Christ because there is an empty tomb. Hallelujah. You know, I was on drugs for 10 years. You know, I, I, ranging from cannabis right through to heroin and crack cocaine. I was an alcoholic at 19. I've been to prison 10 times. I've nearly died five times. One time I did die of a heroin overdose and I got brought back to life in a crack house. I mean, these people were notorious for leaving overdose people dead in the back alley. But for some reason that day, they phoned an ambulance, risked bringing the crack house on top. Police attention. They risked that. And today I'm alive. Do you know what? That was three weeks before I went into a Christian rehab. I was already a follower of Jesus back then. The other times I knew he died. I've been knocked over by a car. Landed on the other side of the dual carriageway. A hit and run 50 miles an hour. I got back up. I was like, man, where's my trainer? Everybody's like, don't worry about your trainer. Are you okay? Man, the brand new pair of Nike trainers, man. And I found it, of course. And then I went to hospital. And um, I was fine. The doctor said, man, it's only because you were drunk. That you, you know, your body, your body all loosey goosey, and you just went over the bonnet, landed on the other side, and because you didn't stiff and freeze, like you know, due to like uh, adrenaline, that's why you're not got a broken bone. I know it's because of Jesus Christ that day that I'm fine, that I'm still alive. You know, I can remember another time when I got beaten up and thrown off a bridge outside Doncaster Prison by a gang of lads. Someone found me at the side of the of the river, freez freezing and shivering. I can remember another time, right, when uh, I actually got beaten up in a bed sit. These guys thought I'd robbed a phone. I'd not actually robbed it, but I'd been in a gang fight. And someone had accused me of robbing the phone. And uh, they came in, they attacked me four times. They, they attacked me with bottles, went away. Attacked me with bottles, went away. Attacked me with bottles, went away. And they left me in a pool of blood on my bed. I was covered in glass, blood. I had two fractured cheekbones. I couldn't see out of my eyes for about days. Anyway, I was in hospital. Uh, when, when, when the swelling did go down, there was no white in my eyes. It was all red. Um, and the doctor said to me, it's a miracle that you've not been blinded. It's an even more of a miracle that you're not dead from that attack. I had blood coming out of my ears and everything. Um, I was on Librium. I was detoxing, everything, all in the hospital. And I came my mum walking in to the hospital and crying, right? And I'm lying there in a right mess. And my mum's going, you know what? God's got his hand on your life. You know, I'm praying for you. And God is seriously saving you. So you know what? I laughed at my mum. I thought, mum, you're off your head if you believe in God. And uh, there's me sat there detoxing off alcohol, thinking my mum's off her head. And, um, you know, my dad said to me, Stephen, you're like a cat with nine lives. And I think you're on about your ninth life. Do you know what? I, why do I say this today? I don't say it to bring glory to myself. You know, I mean, I used to commit street robberies. You know, I don't say that to be a big man. I say that because I was an absolute coward. Yeah. I got bullied at school and I, and I, couldn't, I couldn't deal with that, you know. So I started committing street robberies when I was older, wanting to be that macho man, wanting to prove myself, wanting to feed my own habit with money, but beat people up in the process so I could feed that, that sort of cowardly vibe that I had. I thought I were a bad boy. I pretended to be a bad boy. Do you know what I mean? I don't say this to glorify myself. I say it to glorify God. Because you know what? I was living a lie for 10 years. And the day that I found Jesus Christ, I began to be comfortable with who I was. I wanted to be Stephen again. Amen. Do you know it was in a bed sit, a broken bed sit, and I love with me and Darren shared this because you know our testimony is similar. But you know what? I was on heroin with my with my fiance. She was sleeping around with other people and stuff, and I was just putting up with it, you know, because I was at rock bottom. I, I didn't want to lose her. If I lost her, I lost everything. And then what happened was she was meant to move out with me. She, you know, she got with someone else, and you know it was all messy, and I, and I was broken. You know, I started to have like an emotional uh, break, nervous breakdown. I started to walk in front of cars or trying to commit suicide. And I can remember this one time I was on my knees, right? And I just said to God, like, you know, one of those moments where you don't believe in God, but you're kind of just like, God, if, if you're real, then why does all this stuff keep going wrong in my life? Anyway, I moved into this bed sit, started selling cannabis, got sorted. But I wasn't sorted inside, you get me? And I can remember one day watching the match of the day and the penny dropped. 
and I realised that God existed. I realised that this football stuff was idolatry, that these people were giving so much glory to these football players, getting paid millions for kicking a hot lump of air around. All the singing, all the chanting, all the passion. And I realised that they should be giving God that glory, the God who created them. So I started to see God. I started to go to church. And one day, I can remember I was at a training centre, bit of hope, trying to get a job for the first time in years on a subitech script and I can be in this toilet cubicle I walked in there I felt like I needed to repent I walked in there I prayed I repented I said Lord Jesus Christ I'm sorry for rejecting you I'm sorry for rejecting my family I'm sorry for hating my own family because I hate you please forgive me of my sin and you know what in that very second I kid you not I felt this experience in my heart it was like the Sun was bursting out of my chest right I felt this love coming out of me I was high as a kite I felt euphoric instantly what I did I didn't know what was going off I stepped back I thought man I'm coming up off of some old ease some old ecstasy pills or something I looked at my eyes in the mirror they weren't dilated they were normal I was thinking man what's going off here by this time I'm feeling this light and this love and this power coming out of my face coming out of my body and everything and this 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 presence in my heart it was like love it was like fear and it was like glory all wrapped together and it was welling up within me and it was bubbling out of my throat and I didn't know what was going off I came walking out of the toilet cubicle thinking, man I need to get back to forklift training and um, as I stepped out of the door it hit me I, I, I was like wow God you, you're real you mean the God that my mum told me about that fairy tale stuff is actually real and you know what God said to me I'm calling you out of drug addiction I never wanted to get clean until that second. God changed my heart. My, my near-death experiences flashed before me. I realised how close I've been living to hell. Right, yeah? Because when you die, if you die without knowing Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Sorry if you don't like that this morning, but it's, it's the truth. I need to say it. But I was going to hell. And God saved me. I had a fear of God and I had a sense that this moment was destined. It's like it had been written, you know what I mean? Like it was predestined in time. I knew that I was different to the people that were in the training centre. They were all swearing and smoking. And all of a sudden I realised this is who I've always meant to have been. A follower of Jesus Christ. I walked out that day. I told I went into the crack house next door a few weeks later smoking loads of crack. And telling them about Jesus. And about how I met Jesus in this toilet cubicle. They all thought I were off my head. So, um, you know, I had to go to rehab. And the rest is history. You know. And ever since then God's done amazing stuff in my life. You know, I want to say today, right. Like, I have a little baby boy today. And I just want to say this, I thought this this morning, because there's an empty tomb today, Shiloh exists. I should be dead. Amen. You're a miracle baby. That's why you're called Isaac, your middle name. Child of promise, miracle baby who should not exist. But because Jesus has risen, there is new life in Stephen. I'm a different man and that baby boy exists. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're gathered here today. Hallelujah. I mean, the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. If Jesus isn't raised, then that's it. We might as well all go home. It changes everything. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was delivered over to death for our sins, for our wrongs, for our evils, for our trespasses. Yet he was raised to life for our justification. In other words, we can be made right with God today, not by our own works, but by what Jesus accomplished on the death and his resurrection. Scripture also says that those who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, God will credit with righteousness. That's amazing. Think about it like this, right? Yeah? We've all got a bank account, yeah? And we're all bankrupt. We're all dead in sin. We've sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. Amen. We're all bankrupt. And God says that if you believe that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead and you believe in him as Lord and confess it with your mouth and believe with all your heart, God will give you righteousness in your bank account. He'll make you a millionaire. Amen. Amen. Come on. This is amazing. This is what it is. This is the grace of God. Amen. It's not religion. It's the grace of Almighty God. Salvation can never be earned. You know what? Jesus plus a little bit of Jesus' work plus a little bit of our work equals nothing. You get nothing if you try to earn it. But Jesus plus nothing, just belief. Amen. We get everything. Hallelujah. Because he rose from the dead. Amen. 
truth is, is that our greatest deeds could never meet the standards of a holy God. We could never be that good. But scripture declares that God sent forth his only son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life, to die for sinners and to be raised from the dead. There's no more condemnation to those in Jesus this morning. There's no condemnation. There's no longer a fear of punishment. There's no longer a fear of death. You know, when I was on drugs and I used to take speed and ecstasy, I was addicted to it right here. I always used to be scared of dying. I used to constantly have this fear of like, are these going to be the last drugs that I take? But I would chain to it, you know. I loved the kind of rush I got from it as well, the adrenaline buzz that I got, like this could be the, my last night. Do you know what I mean? And I always feared death. It, it left me with severe anxiety by the time, you know, like towards the end of my addiction, I had pains in my chest all the time, pains in my wrist, really bad stress. And I would say today, in that toilet cubicle where the risen Lord met me, hallelujah, the anxiety was gone instantly. No more tranquilizers. No more paranoid schizophrenia. I had a sound mind because there's an empty tomb. Because there's an empty tomb, Jesus filled that toilet cubicle. Hallelujah. Not in a church, not with a priest laying his hand on my head, but in a toilet cubicle of all places. <laughs> Come on. Do you know what? You don't have to be good enough for God. God will stoop down and meet you where you're at. He's just looking for a broken heart. He's looking for a humble heart that says, Lord, I'm done, man. Take me, take me, hallelujah. You know, it's when we do this, that God promises to make us new creations like Darren. Yeah, you are a new creation, Darren. The old has passed, behold, the new has come. Amen. That's the resurrection story right there. We're being formed into a new creation. And I want to say today that that is the only hope for humanity. It's the only hope for this society that we live in today. You see, our sin and our selfishness has corrupted absolutely everything. And it's just, it's just Paul says in our text really he says that the first man Adam in the first man Adam all die and speaking of the same subject in another place he explains what he means there he says that just as sin came into the world through the one man Adam and death came through sin so death spread to all because all sinned but then he goes on to say the free gift is not like the trespass for if many died through the one man's trespass much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. He's talking about the resurrection guys right there. Because people die because of their sin and their guilt. Sin, guilt and death are connected. It's cause and effect, right? But I want to tell you today that it's also cause and effect that new creation, being born again, righteousness... And then eternal life, the resurrection, is cause and effect. You're either in one or in the other. The Bible says that we're dead in sin. But he wants to give us life. And the cause and effect of that is either you will die eternally or you will live for eternity with Jesus Christ. It's all in the text this morning. As I draw to a close, I just want to point you back to the scripture that we just read this morning. You see, he says this, the Apostle Paul. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith today is futile. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because God didn't raise Christ from the dead. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised your faith is futile and you are still in your sins there's that resurrect there's that reference again to the resurrection and the justification amen if christ is not raised by god then we are not right with god wow and according to paul this would mean that those also who have fallen asleep in other words those who have died well they've perished we're not going to see them ever again Again, the link between sin, guilt, and death. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all a people most to be pitied. In other words, we've lived this Christian faith, we've walked it out, we've given our lives to it. And if there's no eternal life, no resurrection at the end of it, then we are all people most to be pitied for the sacrifice that we have, we have made to, to live this life. 
But I want to say to you today as I close, Christ rose as the first fruits. And then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. That is a beautiful thing, isn't it? And do you know what we get from this text? Is that basically the only way to be right with Jesus Christ, to be right with God, is to be united with Jesus Christ. That's what Paul's saying here. If Christ is raised, then we will be raised because we're united to him by faith. But if Christ is not raised, we're not going to be raised. Because, and be, But that's amazing because if Christ is raised, you can be assured and guaranteed today that you are going to rise from the dead one day. Hallelujah. That is amazing because he did it. If you ever doubt that, go look it up. Go think about it. Go look at the proof for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's also a very, very scary thing. Because if it is true, this message, and we are not united to Christ in faith, then we have eternal judgment and hell to be fearful of. And you know what? It would be unloving and ungracious of me not to say that to you all this morning. We need to fear hell. We need to shun hell in order to gain heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And as a church, we want to plunder hell and populate heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I think that's a beautiful thing really just to move on now to Darren because today is about Darren and about Jesus but it's about it's about Darren and it's about his incredible commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ you see baptism is about unification with Jesus that's what it's about Darren's here today to publicly draw a line in the sand and say that was me this is the new me I'm committed to this this is who I am now. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm saying, that's it. I'm done. There's a separation between the old me and the new me. I'm, I'm committing my life to Jesus Christ. I'm publicly declaring it. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 6, 5 about, uh, about, about baptism and the unification, you see. Really profound day. Do you know, I'm a bit jealous, actually, that you're getting baptized on Resurrection Sunday. I mean, if I could rewind the clock eight years and when I was being baptized, I'd, think, I'd be like, no, no, I, I want to get baptized on Resurrection Sunday and I'm going to plan it all. Uh, for me, I just wanted to do it as quick as I could. So, you know me, I rush into everything, don't I, Janet? I just, I just get it done as quick as I can. And um, yeah, and actually, I didn't really fully understand what I would do when I did it. But, um, but anyway, so this is what the Apostle Paul says about baptism. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. And that's your baptismal verse, mate, on the certificate that you're going to get. Right? On Resurrection Sunday. When you go into that water, it's symbolic of you dying. You're going into the ground, you're going into the grave. And when you come out of that water, the new man in Jesus Christ. You're a new creation, brother. Behold, all things are new, the old is gone. Amazing stuff, isn't it? Amazing. I wonder if we can give the Lord a clap this morning. It's absolutely remarkable. This is what it's all about, guys. United with Christ. And that's what we're here to celebrate today in Darren's life. Why don't you come up, brother, and, and share some of your story with us? Because we'd love to hear it again. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, it's nice to see everybody here. It's nice to see my friends, my family, brothers and sisters. Um, this has been a, a journey. It's been a journey um, of um, mental health for me. Uh, mental health has been a big, a big problem. Um, but however, you know, I've, I've tried pushing through. Um, it it, it kind of got to a point, as I said, like in October, um, that. Um, things were getting tough for me um, I, I, I had a marriage breakup um, I, 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 I blame a lot of this on uh, on myself by uh, doing drugs being a sloth by uh, pornography getting in, you know addicted to these things um, just just not being healthy not eating right not not doing things correctly um, fear, anxiety, just all of these things that have been going on in my life, all of my life really. Um, I'm just so thankful for Jesus 
for forgiving me the grace, the mercy that is shown upon me. And um, I 100%, 100% in my heart believe that God created this world. Amen. Amen. I do believe that 100%. I do believe that, you know, he, 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 was, he, he died on the cross for us. There's the evidence of it. I've, I've done no end of looking on YouTube and, 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 and reading things. And I just, I know he existed. I 100% believe that he rose. He rose for the dead, for, for us, to save us. And he saved me. Um, from October, I found the church. I found the church. The church has been amazing to me. God, working with God, praying and, and, and just believing and getting my faith back. It's just nice. It's, it's amazing to have that, you know, to have that relationship with God once again. It's been many, 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 many years, decades, decades. But now I've got the love of the cross back. I'm just, thank you, God. Just thank you, God. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, and I, I, you know, I just want to carry on going the way that I've been going. Um, I, I'm getting fitter. I'm getting happier. The the anxiety, the fear, everything is is just it's 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 going. It's disappearing. There's still little parts there, yeah. Um, but with work, effort, building my relationship up with Jesus. I know he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna get me going, and uh, and I already am going and, and on my way. So yeah, so I'm um, just today. It's a very happy day for me. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'd like to move forwards and just say thank you, church. Thank you, my to my dad. Thank you to my mum. Thank you to to, to to you know to Mandy to, to everybody. Steve, Chloe, everybody for being there for me and supporting me. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Don't go there, mate. We're going to pray for you. But you know what? It's amazing, isn't it? I, I love that, how you're looking after your body now as well. You know, that's amazing, brother, because, you know, like, this body, it's going to live forever. Amen. It's going to be raised. You know what I mean? This isn't just like, you know, oh, well, it's high pie in the sky and we're all spiritual beings and we don't need to look after this world or our bodies. No, God gave you a body. It's your te the temple of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? A little bit similar to me, you know. I, 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 you know, I wanted to learn things. You know, there's changes that happen in us, you know. And I just love, I love it, mate. I love the transformation in your life. So, let's we pray for Darren. Should we stand to our feet, church, or just a few of us? Or